You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. Joined once again by Ricky Baez, but on a Monday today, not Friday. So, Ricky, how are you at the beginning of this week? It's a little bit off because you're right. Normally, we do this on a Friday. The week already passed by. We've got some things that we talk about from the week, but not what we talk about right now, hopefully would be what the week looks like. So we'll see if it works out that way. Now, instead of arriving at the finish line, we're setting the tone for the rest of the week. Maybe this is how we should do it. Well, we'll see. Let's see what happens today. We'll see. We'll see right. What kind of tangents we, we go we go on today. Right. Well, well, good. What we are going to talk about, though, is an article that you found. Um, it has to do with employee retention. So I'll, I'll let you take it from here. Yeah. So you know what, Pete? It, it's a... Um, if we've all heard of the great resignation. That's been the phrase that's been used for the past, I want to say year or so. And longer, lo pre-pandemic, in fact. The great resignation is a term that was pre-pandemic? I thought we've talked about that. Yeah, it was coined <laughs> by um, a, a professor at Texas A&M. Yep, and, yep. And it, this was, again, in 2019, I believe. Oh, look at that. It was published. I know it was, it was prior to any talk of COVID, it may have been 18, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was 2019. Well, I mean, it, it's it's definitely ringing true right now. You know, you've got people just jumping ship left and right. And, you know, it, yes, money is one thing to keep people motivated and keep people, you know, just engaged in what they do. But what, what some organizations fail to realize is the total compensation piece that they really need to market you know, to let them know, hey, there's there's other things that you get here that you may not get in other organizations. So anyway, um, I've, I've been looking into that because, you know, I started um, uh, uh, teaching over at Rollins again in, uh, for the uh, for the summer session and the, and the fall's about to start. And I was trying to find some relative articles um, about how to keep people, how to make sure that above and beyond money, how do you create a culture where where people do stick around for the right reasons? So you, you don't mean pe keep people in your class. You? It, it, <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it, it's in class too, right? <laughs> but it, it, and by the way, I teach it in such a way that trust me, they're engaged. And I have no <laughs> doubt. No one, no one, no one would doubt that. But you know, you you said it, so I just want. I, I know. <laughs> so no, yeah, keep people engaged at work. At, at work, work, right? At, at work. Class. That's yeah, what it is. You don't need help there. Okay, got <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm already loving Monday. All right, Monday, <laughs> Monday, it. it's awesome. so far. Okay. <laughs> so here's the article that I found that I I don't know. I I sent this to you. I don't know if it was on a Wednesday night. You know, having my scotch, and I'm like, oh man, that's when you know you're old, Pete. That's when you know you're old. On a Wednesday night, you're having scotch. You finish watching uh, Jeopardy, right? With <laughs> with whatever host they have, and I'm like, you know who would like this, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Like this, work, go. <laughs> this work article yes yeah. you were right yeah and You're it's correct. uh it's it's from inc right and it's the nine questions you must ask your employees once a month if you want them to stick around by jessica stillman so i'm like all right let me send this to pete let me see what uh what uh, he thinks about it. i'm like oh perfect timing because this is what i'm talking about in class this is what a lot of clients are asking me about and and it's a timely uh, subject for us to talk about here, which you and I had this conversation last year, right? Trying to figure out what are some creative ways we can come up with to keep people on board, right? We, yeah, we did. We've talked about yeah. the importance of of uh, perks and benefits outside of regular compensation, as you were just saying. And the other world continues to evolve, so I think this is a timely conversation for us, since everyone is not as worried about employee retention, I think, as uh, seemed to be pretty crazy six months ago. The The job market has cooled down a bit, but yeah. it's still a, a, a very important thing. It always is important, uh, but unemployment's very low. Still more jobs than people. I don't think that's going to change. So employee retention needs to be top of mind for everyone still. Yeah, so these these nine questions, according to, to this article um, by Jessica Stillman, she says if you ask these nine questions on a regular basis or just once a month, you'll be able to get real-time data, real-time pulse information that would help you make on-the-fly adjustments on, on what you need to do to be proactive and prevent somebody from leaving instead of waiting for the exit interview after somebody already decided to leave and you get raw data from them. Now you're you're a big fan, I know, because you've implemented it for us at Four Corner Resources of stay interviews. Yes. Is this is this along the same lines or is this something you do separately 
from those. So this right here, if this is done properly, it would take the place of a state interview. Because state it, because you know the reason we have a state interview is because we feel whether reactively or proactively depending on the situation, we feel like we're just missing something. We feel like there's just something that we as leadership are not aware of that we should be aware of so we can, you know, just 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 flip the switches that are needed to make sure people are engaged. But if we do this on a regular basis, how I understand it, um, it eliminates the need of, of going through the pulse survey process. Because if you do these once a month, you get the right information and you'll be, I don't want to say rocking and rolling. It's not that you'll be changing um, lanes every now, uh, all the time, but you'll be in the know in real time, which I think is really valuable, especially if you want to retain the right talent and be efficient about it. No doubt. No doubt. It makes perfect sense. And I'm, I'm glad you had a chance to clarify that. So these would be in addition to, I, I believe in the article, she suggested uh, sort of a monthly touch base to, to get yep. these, these questions answered, or at least like you said, get your finger on the pulse of, of your staff. On a one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I mean, that's how, to be honest, that's how I would do it. I think the best way for any any organization to really get true information is to start with building the culture of trust right if you start building that culture of trust people will start trusting you more starting to trust the process and they start telling you some things that otherwise it would not be easy for them to do so so well, we ask, why do you think sorry to cut you off okay, you have yeah. thought, but i do have a question uh -huh. why do you are you done you're gonna let me go I, I cut you off completely. No, no, what do you mean? I'm here. No, <laughs> no, no I'm, drink, I'm drinking water. <laughs> no, I wanted you to continue your thought, but uh, I think I think I interrupted you too much for you to do that. No, no, I'm sorry. I was going to say, no, no, go ahead, because I think you're going to ask me, why do I think people are people are not as trusting as we think they should, right? Well, why? Yes, exactly. So why is trust so hard to come by? Oh, and I, I assume... Maybe I shouldn't assume, but I, 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 I'm, I think you mean trust in the sense that the employees have to feel open, um, vulnerable, if you will. Now, maybe that's the wrong word, but comfortable uh, sharing concerns, right? Sharing uh, whatever is on their mind, good, good, bad, or indifferent. Is that is that what you mean? Like that that requires trust to be open and honest with someone, or is it a different kind of trust that? I mean, it does. It's I do mean that. Right. Because it's look, historically, um, employees have been it's chances are every employee that you and I have ever met has worked for a crappy company. Right. Historically, oh. I, it's it's I'm I'm guaranteeing that happened. And using that assumption here, I am using assumptions, using that assumptions Good that reason. they've worked there. Right? <laughs> what happens is, is that that one negative experience ruins their entire experience everywhere else, right? Now, I'm here to say they're human, we're human, I completely understand it, but you know what? It, it's, it's on us as the leadership team for any organization to break that for them. Now, I would venture out to, uh, to, uh, to say this as well, Pete. I would say they have um, a play in this as well because you cannot let your experience from one organization ruin your experience from every other organization. But then at the same time, I understand why they feel that way. Right. That's why as leadership, I know we have that power to step in proactively and say, look, I'm let me I, I want to make a genuine effort to build trust with you. I mean, it's weird something to say that, right? It, it, to me, for me to verbalize, it sounds weird, but the actions should speak much louder than those words. And that's the point you, you just made. I'm glad you got there because to say, trust me, is almost a hollow statement. No, you know, yeah. it show that you uh, are worthy of the trust. Um, I think what is always a little surprising to me is that it's not granted going in. Like If you are going to choose to accept a role with uh, with an organization and vice versa. If an organization hires someone, that mutual trust should be in place from the beginning. And if it's not, you shouldn't enter into that relationship in the first place. And but but I don't even though I think that's how things should be, should being a word that mm -hmm. doesn't really get you very far. We know that that uh, it's not reality. 
reality is there is a level of distrust. I, I think more so from the employee's perspective than the employer's perspective, where I can tell you if we hire someone, we trust them going in or if we, if we feel there's reason not to, we won't hire them. I think that applies to nearly every scenario that I can think of um, in, in hiring. But I think employees are inherently skeptical of the employer to some degree. Is that, we're off topic, but is that something you'd agree with? I do agree with that. It's it's but but yes, we're kind of off topic, but we, kind, we but but we are on because every every one of these questions that they ask in this article is designed to give the leader information that's relevant to the organization that will help the leader pull the right levels to make sure the employee has what they need to be productive at work, right? Yep. So that 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 conversation, how the leader approaches um, um, responding to those answers, that's what's going to build the trust, not the questions on its own, how they handle the information, right? Sure. Because Thanks. if we have some back and forth uh, uh, dialogue as to why things should be this way and that way, not, not, not trying to quiet each other's voices, but to really fully understand what the other person is trying to say. And once the employee goes home that night, they're like, man, they really... They're really listening to me. They're really paying attention, especially if that's something they've never seen before. They're still going to be a little bit skeptical, but they're going to give you a little bit more inch of that trust until next thing you know, they it, it that that solid foundation is there. And Pete, once you have that, you know this. Once you have that, there there is nothing. Well, let me take it back. There is something that can break that trust, right? But there's but there's very little that can shake it from the outside in and then people stick around other people other organizations from from across the way will offer them twenty thousand dollars more a year and they'll say no again because they find this culture over here is that much more valuable once you've done that you've won it's interesting won. as you're as you're talking i'm i'm thinking about our uh, our last show that we did uh, when we were discussing generations and children in particular and i made a comment about um how i think it children should be seen more than heard sort of like an old school um yeah that's fake, right right if you remember that part of the conversation yeah. not or that wasn't exactly what i said but that was it was the principle something yeah, about was, the principle said yeah. yeah exactly i remember um, that and i was joking around a little bit with our marketing team knowing as they were putting the podcast up and, and creating the show notes i said yeah you'll you'll hear some opinions you know, from me on that it might not be uh too popular with some folks, but the inverse is true with employees. So you know, students or children are a captive audience, so to speak, right? They, they haven't earned the right to be for their opinion to be relevant in every situation, but it is the polar opposite when it comes to employees where employees uh, you know, show up every day or not by mm -hmm. choice. That's and right. so you have to earn the right the privilege of having them continue to show up as the employer. Now, I think it's mutual. I think the employee has to um, earn the right to continue to be invited back day to day. True, <laughs> I, true. I see that. But <laughs> yeah. I, it, so I, I just find it interesting as you're talking, I could not agree more that you have to listen to your employees. Um, but you also have to create this scenario or the environment where there's something to listen to where they'll, they'll be comfortable Ooh. communicating. So when you, when you talk about trust, that's what I think of. I, I think it, it, you have to, if you're going to share with me something that you don't like uh, a professional, personal concern, whatever it might be, um, an organizational concern, a culture concern, whatever, then you have to be able to trust that it's not going to come back to bite you, that there's not going to be, yeah. Um, anything negative that, that comes from that. And I'll tell you as the employer, I crave that feedback. Now we want it to be done productively and with good, you know, good intentions in mind, of course, not complaining for the sake of complaining, but yeah, it's what makes us better. And without that information, we're guessing. And I don't want to guess. I don't want to guess what our employees are thinking. I want to know whether we always agree is, is different. <laughs> Right. That's that's a different thing. But we need to if, if someone's unhappy, 
I want to know about it in every scenario. Yeah. Can we fix it? We'll try if we can. Hopefully we can. If we can't, well, that's a different discussion, but there's no depend there's no penalty for for that. And I again, I don't think that's no abnormal. I think I'd like to think that most employers, a vast majority of employers would feel the same way. So I don't know if you realize the impact of what you just said, Pete, uh, because it, it's, 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 it's really impactful because you're right. Um, we have to listen to what they say, but you said we have something, of, something along the lines that, yes, we have to listen to them, but we have to give them a reason to say something, right? We have to give them a reason to speak. And that's impactful because that right there is is exactly what leadership is supposed to do. The question is, is it impactful positively or is it impactful negatively, right? Either way, you're going to hear about it, right? But as leaders, we're supposed to give them that reason to say something. Here's the environment. Here's where I want you to work. Here's where I want you to showcase that skill set that I'm paying for you to be on this team. And a, as a reciprocal agreement, you get, you know, cash in your pocket, whatever the case may be. But give me some feedback on how is it going? How can we make it better? And get, getting that feedback, as you know, as I've learned, is easier said than done. So yeah. even though you crave it, it doesn't mean you're going to get it. And I've been victim of that. I say victim. not. I've been um, on the bad end of that where over the years, if, if there's, we've had employees who've left and expressed um you know, their, their dislike in some area that we had no idea. And so that's one of the reasons why you're here. That's one of the reasons why we asked you to, 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 to join us and help us fix those things. And you've come a long way. That's why I mentioned the, um, the stay interviews, because it's one of the things you implemented for that very reason, because we want to know as soon as possible, bad news, early is good news in every scenario. And I, but I don't, Maybe, maybe I need to think through this a little bit more, but it, it's possible and, and probably likely that not that, that employees are hesitant for good reason because of past experiences. You said that a few minutes mm -hmm. ago and I and, and that that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, but what was interesting about this article and why I wanted to to have a chance to talk through it is because if this helps get those answers out in the open um, and helps help set a stage where, employees will be comfortable communicating and sharing uh, because of the way the question's asked. Uh, it's a different different twist on um, maybe what you've done in the past, then I think uh, I think that's worthy of exploration. Yeah, so so you know what? I'll dive in right into that first one. So out of these nine, the first one that that is is on this article is in the past few months, when have you felt most motivated or energized in your work? if at all to me to me that the answer to that question is going to tell you what sparks the fire into that employee because not every employee is sparked the same way right we talked about the four different communication styles the people who are direct the people who are free spirit the people who are um uh, considerate and your systematics right everybody's motivated differently so if you ask this question they will tell you what are they motivated about. So now you know for the future. All right. If a project comes up, because if, if because I know somebody, Pete, when I was interviewing her, um, the interview was going great. But as soon as I mentioned um, a telling a story via Excel, she lit up. And I mean, her eyes were dilated. It's like, man, it's, so, it, 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 it's, it's almost like one of those Harry Styles singer guys came on stage. I don't know. I don't know the pop stars these days. I have no <laughs> Freaking idea! <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I think, you're, I think you hit the mark. I think. <laughs> okay, yeah. People understand what I'm saying, right? No, but she lit up. That's when I knew. Ooh, as soon as we get a project that's heavy on 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 Excel, I'm gonna give that to her. That keeps employees fulfilled. That keeps them motivated. So, but the key to this one is, Pete, if they say, "Well, I haven't," so now you got to take deeper questions. Right. Sure. In the past few months, you haven't felt mo uh, motivated or or energized that you strike red flags all over the place to take a deeper dive into why not. Now, how we take that dive, that's how that, that's how it's going to build that trust, because a leader who doesn't have a backbone, 
a leader who feels intimidated easily, who doesn't really know what he or she is doing, would take that as a negative. Why haven't you been working? So what have you been doing these past three months? What about this? And then employee shutdown. Employee Absolutely. shutdown. Well, that, that's a, you have to be pretty bold out of the gate to answer that you haven't been motivated. <laughs> yeah. And, but could you imagine? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but I think that that really makes the point. You, as an employer, if you ask the question in this, you ask this specific question, you get the answer that the motivation hasn't really been there, yeah. and you react, you punish the employee, for lack of a better way to put it. You're never gonna, you're never gonna get you know truthful answers again, and word's probably gonna get around, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, That's true. That you can't stop so, that. So Let's you address have that right now. Let's address that real quick. I, I don't care how you tell employees, hey, you know what? Keep this to yourselves. They're going to talk. They're going to talk. And let's just assume that employees are going to talk and they can, right? They can, um, especially if, um, if, if things are not going their way or the way they should, you know, they are going to talk. So we have to assume that that information is going to get around. Is I don't know if you trust. <laughs> um, at first, at first. I'm perfectly okay with it. I'm perfectly okay with it. My my job here as an HR leader, Pete, is to make sure people are comfortable in communicating and telling me exactly what's going on so I can help them better. Yep. And if and if I feel if I make them feel better about communicating bad news to you, to me, or to anybody else, I don't care what is said, as long as they know how it's going to be addressed, they're gonna be okay with it. But you know, like 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 any like any relationship, I mean, could you imagine going out with somebody on the very first date and then asking them to, to, to go on a cruise with you that, that very next week? I've seen that happen before, and I've seen people get smacked for that before. <laughs> so because they haven't built that trust, the same thing goes for this. So the first few times that we do this, we have to expect that people are going to talk behind the scenes and they, until they start to realize like, wow, they really mean business. And then they're going to do exactly what they're supposed to. I've seen it happen time and time again. Well, I do think it's a really good question though, um, is it, you, you, you get, it's a, it's an opportunity to gain significant insight mm -hmm. into the mindset of the employee. And then you can proceed accordingly, you know, whether it's a good, the answer you hoped for or, or one that you were surprised by in a negative way. But it, I think avoiding any any um, negative outcome from it is it's got to be there for for the employer. I mean, I, I as I was saying earlier, I want to know if someone's unhappy. You can kind of tell when someone is happy, or maybe maybe you can't. But um, that that's easy. It's the ones that aren't happy that that you have something you have follow up to do. You have more work to do. Yeah. And it doesn't always mean, I think you'd agree with this, maybe not, but that you're going to be able to resolve the issue. Some issues you, you can't fix. If someone, yeah. and this has happened, this is real, real world. Someone wanted to be a teacher who worked for us. That was their goal. That was their dream. Can't make that happen. We don't have any teacher openings yeah. internally. We could help find find a job for, for that person. But there are certain problems that the employer can't solve. But yeah. that's okay. If in in better to to talk that out, and I've had conversations with employees over the years at times. Say, look, if you actually a real 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 story, one of our most valued employees, I won't name names because it was a private thing, but expressed that um, uh, that they were unhappy with with the role that they were in, and um, was trusting enough to share that openly and honestly. And I said, listen, give me, give me 30 days. I, I had a solution and I said, let me, let me see if we can work this out. And if not at the end of those 30 days, I will personally help you find you know, a, a great job. Look at uh, and, and that's what we did. And we, we didn't have to get to those 30 days. We resolved the issue much sooner and moved the person into a new role. And it is, couldn't ha have worked out any better. And so that I can't tell you how much I appreciated that as the employer who, um, you know, that, that, that took a lot of faith <laughs> and trust and, um, and, and I, you know, will always appreciate those things. And that's not something that's easy to do on the employee's person or to no. receive. 
neither, right? Because you're being presented with this trust platter, right? And you have to be careful with that trust platter, right? So it, it, it's, um, it's not a one-way street. So you're right. It, um, it, it does take a specific backbone to be able to be trusting it because that's a gamble because they don't know, I'm not saying you, but a, a regular person, to communicate something like that to a boss who they may or may not know how they're going to to receive it the boss might freak out and say goodbye you're done get out of here leave and and that's the fear right well so, it happened to me as an employee oh that i so I, so you communicated that to a leader and they said forget it you're you're gone they didn't say it exactly like that oh. but uh, but i did communicate that i was in a role this was more than 20 years ago now but that um it it wasn't where I saw myself long-term and I'd been a great yeah. employee. I'd been promoted multiple times and um, they, they held it against. They took it personally mm. that I was saying, I don't want to be part of your organization long-term. And I was effectively asking for help. It was a large organization and my relationship with that person changed overnight. Mm. And yeah. I, I, and it was, it wasn't overt. I mean, I, it was just these subtle things I could just tell that they, yeah. you know, I, I was, I was no longer the, um, you know, the, the, uh, the teacher's favorite or t- teacher's pet, which I kind of <laughs> was <teacher's> pet. <laughs> for this person. It just wasn't where I wanted to be long-term and I had to be honest about it. And yeah. I've, that's always stuck with me uh, that, mm. that, okay. So when I, when I think of why trust isn't inherent, I, yeah, there's you know, people have scars um, from those things, but, but we try really, really hard to, to set the stage where that's not necessary. Um, well, well, this is what I want leaders to know, because this is this is this piece is important, Pete, especially to create that trust that if you have an employee that tells you, I don't want to be here anymore. Right. We can't as leaders, we cannot take that personally, regardless how that feels to us. We got to put those feelings aside because the employees have reasons. They have the, their own reasons as to why. Of course, look into it, right? We should look into it to find out why. But that that investigative process, which it, I shouldn't even call it that, that inquiry should be an inquiry for understanding, not something that could turn the conversation into punitive like a, a disciplinary issue, right? right? Because then what, what leaders do with that, they shut down the entire, because again, they talk, they will shut down any other possible conversation they could have come down the pike for you because on how that will put handled. So yes, that is definitely how to handle it, Pete. And no two dreams are alike, right? I mean, that's, it's very personal. That's true. That's true. I noticed that Freddy Krueger part one and two, they were okay. Part three was horrible. That's- I didn't like it. It's a, now for that one, I know you're always joking, P. Like we're gonna lose the audience. Nobody caught that reference. No, that's only Gen X was in before. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And we talked about that last week, right? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. All right. So, all right. Next so, question. What, what what do we have? The next one is: Is it clear why the work you do matters to the organization? A lot of leaders miss how important this question is. A lot of leaders do. You know, as human beings, we, we, we have a need to belong somewhere, right? Whether it's a family, whether it's a group, whether it's a military, whether it's a gang, whatever the case may be, we, we all have a need to belong somewhere. And that belonging gets more solidified if you know how your position in that organization, how your position affects the bottom line. So... If an employee tells you, yes, I, I know exactly how the job I do over here affects the goal of the organization. If they say, yes, it is clear, you're good, you're golden. Only thing you have to do is how to figure out how to keep that line clear for that person. But if they say no, again, a deeper dive, something is missing. Because if the employee doesn't know why he or she does what they do to make sure the organization is profitable, there's a problem there. There's a problem because they're only doing what their job um, tells them or dictates it does based on the job description. But could you imagine how hard they would work for you if they knew what the bottom line looked like and how they affected it? They're well, going to move you, mountains for you. I, I, I tell you what I like and don't like about this question. I don't mm-hmm. like that it's a yes or no question. Because ah, it could, okay. it, depending on the employee you ask, it could end there. And I, I believe this is the only one on the list that, that's yes or no. And as someone with, um, you know, who, who currently has 
two teenage sons and has had two teenagers prior to that, I will tell you a yes or no <laughs> questions often get you a yes or no answer and nothing yeah. else. Right. That's true. That's I true. was cool today. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Silence. Okay. So, uh, but, but what I do like is the nature of the question and the implication of it. As you just said, it gives you the opportunity to you know, confirm or not, or, or explain that uh, it, why the employee is so important. And I think that gets lost in the day to day um, it, of, of work that you show up in every role should matter. And if that's not a clear answer, maybe it's an opportunity to evaluate why, whether that role is necessary, because when I look back to some of the, you know, the one of the larger employers I've worked for, I have one in mind in particular, mm -hmm. there were a lot of roles that I often wondered what, what the value of it was to the organization mm -hmm. that I saw others in, and that can happen at a big company. So I think it's a really healthy area to explore. I just don't like that. It's yes or no. Uh, so I get that. And, you know, it's um, uh, the new managing director for uh, for Four Corner. I don't know if you want me to say his name or not. He and I were having a great conversation about something like similar to this, because he and I, 20 years ago or so, we worked in the same organization. Right. And I share with him, I only spent nine months there. And he's like, why? And, and I told him because I met my manager twice the day I was hired and the day I resigned. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, whoa. And I'm like, yeah, that's, 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 um, and the manager was shocked that I was right. You're doing so well. I'm like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know how I'm doing. I just come in, I clock in, I do my job and miraculously every other Thursday, I get a paycheck over there. Well, we, right? well, we don't mind talking about Mike, R Ricky, who yeah, okay, who, yeah. you're referring to, but a lot yeah. of people might want to know the name of that company because no, that's like I, a dream, <laughs> a dream job for a lot of people. <laughs> Well, there, it, it's the organization is not there anymore. Well, like, there, it's, there yeah. you go. Yeah, no there no you surprise go. to that either. <laughs> but, you know, if if I had a better relationship with my boss and if I knew how my job affected the bottom line, it wouldn't have it, it, because I left easily. It, it was really easy to drive me away, to to take my focus away from that goal. Right. And our job as leaders is to make it incredibly difficult to to uh, to um, uh, take away the focus of our employees goals in a positive way. Right. Obviously, I, I um, think I think what the, what you were just saying sounded really interesting to me. It was easy to leave. Right. Mm -hmm. But the goal should be to create an environment that's really hard to leave. Yes. I mean, that if, if you if you operated with that in mind always. I, you know, the, then everything kind of falls into place around that. I mean, I, I, I want, I'll, I'll think through that a little bit more and maybe we'll talk about that on a future show is how to create, I mean, what does that really look like? An environment that's, that's hard to leave, but I think expressing interest, you know, creating a, a, a trusting environment that everything we're talking about today is certainly a part of that, but from a bigger picture standpoint, you should have, you should, you should set the bar really high if you, if you can, yes. um, you know, like let's, when people leave, I listen, there, we've had people at, resign, you know, in tears, uh, mm -hmm. because it's not what they wanted to do or, or the, it, it's, they were going to do something else, whether it was move or, or pursue a, de a degree, a, a different you know job in a different industry, whatever, but it was still hard for them to leave where we are. I mean, to me, that's, that's always a, a it means we've done our job absolutely as a, as a leadership team. It does. And, and we talked and yes, and this is another show, but we did talk about this when we had our, our leadership training late last year, that it, it's we should in order to create employee loyalty and where employees really love where they are, you want to create an environment that an employee is more afraid of letting their boss down than being written up. Yep. That's great. If you create that environment when they're afraid of it, and you and I talk, actually, I think you and I talked about that when, when we were having lunch before I came on board, right? Cause, cause we, cause dude, that lunch was three and a half hours. Wasn't was it? it really? Wasn't it really? Cause I think <laughs> you and Stacy, anybody got tickets. Cause we were I know, downtown I remember, Orlando. I remember the ticket. <laughs> so, so yeah, we, we had a good conversation, but yeah, that is our job as, as a leadership team. But yeah, man, it was really easy for me to leave. I did not blink twice of leaving that job. Interesting. All. Shame on them. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right. So here's that third one. Which of which of your skills do you feel is not being used in the in your current role? <laughs> what a great what a great setup to, to hear people describe what's important to them. 
that you may be completely unaware of? I mean, I, I, I don't, there's nothing I don't like about that question. That is perfect. Perfect. Especially, you know, like that story that I shared earlier, that one person I, I, I interviewed, right. Had I, had I not asked her about, about Excel, I still would have hired her because it's her, her, her credentials are really good. Her, her output in HR is awesome. But could you imagine if I never asked that question, right? I never put on any projects, any, any projects that would Excel heavy. So yes, she's being fulfilled in other areas of, of her job, but her passion, if I'm not, if I am not affecting the passion, then what am I doing? Yep. What am I doing? Right? So that is a great question. And so if they say yes, let's find out what that is to keep it. If they say no, let's find out what that is. Because employees who are not fulfilled in their organizations are employees who look for fulfillment elsewhere. That's a great way to put it. Yep. yep. All right. So that one is easy enough. The fourth one, is there any part of the team you wish you got to interact with more? I don't like that one. Why? I like it. Because you're going to get an answer frequently. Well, okay. I mean, it, maybe, maybe it's not that I dislike it. I think it, it's a problematic question potentially. And, and that's okay. So if your goal is really to get you know, things to the surface that would otherwise remain buried, mm -hmm. then that's a good question. But be, you have to be prepared to have answers frequently that, that you don't want. So yes, I want to get involved in social media. Well, you're an accountant. <laughs> we don't need or necessarily want you involved in social media. I mean, that's a great example. <laughs> I can give more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I guess, and, and, I guess. And, and, it, but, yeah. but let me tell you where I'm coming from with this. Yeah, yeah. I've frequently been asked, so the bulk of our, of our staff at Four Corner Resources are recruiters and, and salespeople, but, but more recruiters than anything else. We're a staffing mm -hmm. company. No surprise. New recruiters over the years have frequently come up and said, I want to go be also be part of fill in the blank. And there's just no great opportunity to do that. Well, there isn't necessarily an opportunity to do that. And so inviting that question with little expectation, depending on the scenario that you can actually do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I, I'd rather not ask that, ask it in that particular way. Okay. It. I get that. I get that. The reason I like this question, Pete, is, is um, I've actually asked this before um, in, in, in my previous job because I did have somebody in, in an HR specialist position doing a lot of tactical work, admin work, right? And then just in a regular casual one-on-ones, we were at Chili's. I, I, I know I, I, I went there a lot with them, um, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and we just had a conversation like, hey, so what, what do you like about HR? I mean, because who who gets up every morning and says, I want to do human resources, right? You know, I've always joked about that. And she flat out told me, like, you know what? I love the employer relations aspects. I love when you go in and do investigations because um, I like to train my teams up. So whenever I did an investigation that I could talk about, I come back to my team. Here's the situation. How would you handle it to give them exposure to it? I didn't know that she liked that aspect because everything about her demeanor told me she didn't like it, mm. right? But she told me, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. I thought you hated it, to be honest. That's why I kept you doing all these other things. And when she said that, I'm like, all right, let me test that. So I included her into some, some investigations with me. And man, five years later, now she's a director of employer relations at a large company. All right. Well, that, <laughs> well that's, a, that's a great example of it, of when it can go well. When it can go well, yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe, maybe it could be phrased a little bit differently. Something like, uh, what, what part of your role do you wish you could do more of? Um, yeah, but, Got it. but, but to, I don't know. I just having been asked the question more than a few times over the years, um, unprompted, Hey, I'd hmm. really like to be doing X, Y, Z. Well, and, and if X, Y, Z has nothing to do with your job function, <laughs> that's a tough thing, right? I don't want to, I don't want to shoot down anyone's ambition far from it. Um, but a lot of times it's just not practical. And so I just think you'd, you'd get a lot of answers. You, by asking that question frequently that 
um, you won't be able to do anything about. I hear that. I hear that. That's so, okay. but it's so still, if, look, for depending if you were on to write this, it'll be nine. Huh? <laughs> if if you were to write this article, it'll be not. It'll be eight questions. You well, have. Well, we're to not ask. done yet. Might be short. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> Got it. All right. Here's the fifth one. How do you feel about the current level of social interaction across the team? This is big. I think this one is huge because a lot of people won't be open and honest, or maybe they don't know, right? Because sometimes, especially with this pandemic, now three years almost into it, where Zoom and Teams and all these other areas, all these other, all these other tools that we use to interact and replace that human interaction three years ago. So sometimes when employees feel I, it, it's I'm not a doctor, right? But if they feel down, they feel depressed, you know, I would like to think chances are it's because of the lack of interaction. And they don't know that it is that but if you ask, and say, Hey, how do you feel about the social interaction between the, the, the teams? Um, if the if the trust is there, they're going to be honest, and they'll tell you, you know what, I wish we would meet more. I wish we could have more one-on-ones. I wish we could have more whatever, but I think that's a great question. I mean, are you agreeing with it or not? So I'm thinking of a couple of different things. Uh, when you say social, and I, I realize you didn't write the question, but when you think of social interaction, do you think of it as non-work related activity or do you mean interacting? When I think social, I think non-work. Um, Cause it's not phrased to say, you know, interaction period it, it specifically says social uh, is that do you interpret it that way that's a good question because i interpret it, it, it it's how you interact socially so to me hmm that that's making me pause now right because you're right i think it's social into it, it's it's non-work related but isn't there some non-work related interaction weaving into a work related interaction? Maybe, but depending on the company, maybe not. And the, mm -hmm. depending on the job, the, the situation. So that's why I think that's a question. Another one that may not be universally a good idea to ask. Um, but, but I guess there's no harm in asking as long as you are prepared for an answer that you may not be able to do anything about. For example, if you're, in a um you know an hourly an hourly job that's that's virtual right where, where does social interaction come into play uh -huh. with that really if you're spread throughout the country if you are um you know if, if the job really just does it is it conducive to getting together and socializing um you know that that but 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 on the other hand if the goal is to understand how your employees really think and feel, by all means ask. So if you have an employee who craves social interaction and the job doesn't afford that for them, well, then you will, then you, it is worth knowing. But once again, that may lead to some places that, um, that give an employee a, a reason to reconsider whether they're in the right role. But yeah. I don't know that that's inherently bad either. Yeah, but, I mean, the goal is well, well, <laughs> and I'm, I guess that's where I'm struggling. If the goal is to, it, yeah, I'm wearing two different, I'm thinking of two, I, I can't separate these hats right now where one, one, one hat is my Zen gig hat with, which is our new employee wow, advice yes. brand yeah. and website where I would tell employees, if you crave social interaction, your job doesn't, doesn't afford that, then you're in the wrong job. Okay. Yep. Conversely, if you want to be left alone other than doing your job and you're forced to be more social outside of the workplace. And I've been in that situation too, um, where I, 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 it was too much. I, I wasn't allowed to do what I wanted to do you know, after work. I was told what to do that. I had to say it was mm. like a drink in the Kool-Aid sort of situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't want to do that long-term. So you have to find the right balance there. And, and that's a very personal individual thing. So that's my Zen gig hat where you should find what makes you happy as best you can. If we're talking retention, that, that, that question might not be the best one to ask. So that's a good I'm point. So, so you know what? I'm with you. I'm with you. That is a really good point because how do you feel about the current level of social interaction across the team? Unlike any other question, if you say you don't like it, right, 
or you don't want to interact with anybody, you shouldn't. I mean, maybe you should dig a little bit to see if maybe people are treating them bad. But if the employee just wants to be left alone <laughs> and do their job, then leave them alone. And right, let I'm, them put do their job. I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. For Ricky's advice to hiring managers or managers, HR professionals. Mm -hmm. Should you want to, do you want, should you try to retain employees who ultimately aren't in the perfect job for them? Okay. Should I try to retain employees who are perfect for, or not perfect? Are not in the perfect job for them selves. I learned this lesson a long time ago. I have the answer. And the answer is no. The answer is no. If they, if somebody's leaving, right, because they don't like you here, whatever the case may be, um, I'm going to try to fix the things that I can fix culturally, right? But if I can't do any of that, if there's nothing I can do, if the employee just doesn't feel fulfilled or it doesn't matter what I do, I'm not going to try to keep them because now I have a hostage situation, right? I'm not going to. No, I do because, um, uh, oh, man, I'm going to call her out. Her name is Holly. If she's listening, uh, Sorry, she knows Holly. I love her to death. Yeah, Holly. Holly, Holly, and I. We used to be. She, she, she was the VP um, of the organization I was working for, and then um, um, I was the uh, HR manager. And she found out that I had employees coming to my employees coming to me saying, "Hey, look, um, I'm not happy here. I mean, I am with what I'm doing. I can't move up unless you, me, die or hit the lotto or leave." Right. <laughs> right. So I'm like, look, I completely I completely understand that. So she told me I'm going to be looking elsewhere. Right. And I told her, you know what? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Um, now, the only way I would help if they're performing. Right. If they're right. not performing. No, -uh, that's a whole different story. But look, um, she found out that that I talked to employees that look, I know people around here. You're not happy here. I want you to be happy. Right. I'm taking I, I, I'm focusing on the H and HR. Right. Because if I do everything to keep you here and you're not being fulfilled here, and there's nothing I can do again. I got a hostage situation that could turn ugly. I'd rather you be happy somewhere else. Right. And she and I butt ahead. She's like, Ricky, stop. Stop pushing people away. And she learned how I roll and she learned how I deal with this. And so we're best friends now. Hi, Holly. I know <laughs> I'm going to send this to her. So, <laughs> I'm so maybe, her. We, maybe we agree on this. So if, if this is going to be universally used, maybe the question could be, how do you feel about the level of interpersonal interaction across the team. There you go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Just when it gets to the social part, it's a weird, it's a weird deal. Um, some companies do very well by, by uh, playing together as, as much as they work and other mm -hmm. companies um, are, are very effective and, and great to work for by, by not going in that area at all. So I, I think it's, it's just, I just, universally i think it's uh, it's not the best question so we're down yeah. to seven but let's keep I'll, going all right number six how do you prefer to be recognized for a work well done i love this one pete because if we get this one wrong it can backfire big time big time big time i don't know if i told you the story about the organization i worked for the one guy who was an introvert he was a marketing professional they had a contest and he's an introvert kind of guy he keeps to himself but he's really good at what he does i get it marketing introvert that doesn't really work well um but uh he he did such a phenomenal job he won that contest right he won it's like 10 grand i forgot what it was it was a big part of the contest and the in and the the vp in front of the uh the uh the um uh, uh town hall of 400 people he called him up on stage. Hey, come up here, Jordan. And he's up. There. Everybody's clapping and he is freaking out. He's sweating. He's sweating through his shirt. He's about to pass out on stage. Everybody's clapping. And I'm like, oh, my God, because I know he was an introvert. And I'm like, poor Jordan. And I'm thinking, please don't pass out. Please don't pass out because I care about him. And I don't want to do the work as comp paperwork. Right. <laughs> so, a lot but paperwork. really, I care about him. Right. But then afterwards, I talked to the VP. I'm like, hey, have you noticed how uh, how much he was sweating up there? He's like, no, no, why? And I'm like, dude, he's an introvert. He doesn't like to be in front of people like that. What you just did single-handedly, so, so, you've, you've ensured that that never happens again. <laughs> and that's when it hit him. He's like, 
Oh, and I talked to him. I'm like, Jordan, you good? He's like, dude, can I go home? Don't. Bro. I got this. I'll talk okay. To Mark. Okay. So I'm, I'm devil's advocate with this. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this is apparently my role today with these questions, but <laughs> is that practical to accommodate? How do you like to be you know, recognized if you get 10 different answers it, it, in every company is different. A company, you know, the size of four corner resources with our roughly 35 employees, we can be really flexible and agile in, in how we do things. But when it's 3,500 employees or 35,000 employees, not so much, or even 350 employees, that's probably as hard as anything else. Cause that's, you're, <laughs> you're in the between at that point. Yeah. So it's, is it, is the goal to, if the goal is to know what's on the employee's mind and accommodate it as best you can, great. Mm -hmm. If the goal is to take whatever the employee wants and give it to them, not great. Because yeah. I, I guess when I look at that, if, if I ask and, and there's a decent chance I can't accommodate it, was I better to not ask in the first place? Or tell them why you can't accommodate it. Right. Because wouldn't that build a, a, a bigger bond as just saying, look, I can't do that. And here's why. Let's have a conversation about why that is. But I'm not looking at this question as the actual reward. I'm looking at this question at the, as the, the delivery of the reward. Right. Oh, I don't know. I know. I get it. Right. I want to uh, be given gift cards. Well, we don't do, we, you know, for whatever reason, our company can't ever give gift cards. Not going to happen. Okay. What do we do about that? Sorry. Thanks for your answer. <laughs> Prepare to be disappointed. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Suddenly turn into the U.S. press secretary. Lower your expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, that's as far that's as close as I'll get to that line. If anybody uh, heard of that, I just snorted. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I, it it's, so, it's, so it's one of those questions that depending on where you are with the – but you know what, Pete? Even then, let's say it's a three thousand is is a three thousand employee organization. I wouldn't expect you to know everybody's things, but I would expect my leaders to have a relationship with their employees enough so my leaders know, and they would know how people like to be recognized. But I'm hearing you. If they say, "Oh, how would I want to be recognized?" Oh, give me ten thousand dollars. Well, yeah. Let me tell you why that's not going to happen. <laughs> right. right? Let's have a let's level set expectations on that. Um, but, so but, I guess uh, it's going to be within reason. Well, and I'll still say, at least I know where your head is because whether we talk about that out loud, whether you've said it to me directly, that is what you're thinking. And so yeah. at least it gives me a chance to address it if I can't accommodate it, right? Okay, Ricky, you really want gift cards. Here's why we can't do that. The size of the organization, it's impractical. It's not, we do. And instead we do it this way. Um, but we'll, we'll, where possible, we'll take you know, what, what you're asking for into consideration. We'll run up the front yeah. flagpole. So maybe there's, there's merit and benefit just of doing that. Uh, uh, even if you can't solve it by, by, you know, and I'll, and I'll, I'll concede this, that, that if you as the employee share with what, um, what you want, it's something I'll never be able to accommodate for whatever reason. Hopefully I'll make you feel better uh, by explaining why. Exactly. I was just about, I was, the, that's why I wanted to stop real quick. Look, sometimes if you can't do it, employees appreciate the good faith effort, like a real authentic good faith effort and say, look, I don't know. I don't know if I can get that, but let me go ahead and see what I can do. Right. And, and we've talked about this where as the employee, if you're listening, you have to be prepared. If you offer a suggestion, it doesn't, it doesn't mean it can be implemented and, and, you know, don't be disappointed by that. And I would say always offer the suggestion because that shows that you care and you're interested, but just don't take it personally. If your organization can't, um, can't facilitate whatever you've, you've suggested. A hundred percent true. Yeah, it, it's because not 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 every organization can do it. Just the fact that they looked into it, I mean, says a lot, yeah. <laughs> right? To see if you can or not. But not not every Amazon wish list is fulfilled. Exactly. All right, <laughs> there we go. We move right. on. Yes. Here's that next one. Um, this is similar to a previous one. 
Number seven, is there any aspect of the organization that you wish you knew more about? Now that, this one, I feel entirely differently about. Because, really? yeah, because you're, I'm not implying that you're going to be involved as much as I'm implying that the implication of the question is that you can be informed and aware. So, hey, we'll, we'll help you gain exposure to what the, the social media team's doing or uh, where possible we can, um, you know, just make sure you're, you're in the loop with what their plans and objectives mm -hmm. are, whatever it might be. But I, but I, I see that differently than it, <laughs> being involved. Right. Um, so knowing Get about it. being aware of mm, great being involved, involved, maybe not. So if, if they say yes to that question and next thing you know, you're like, Oh, I want to know about payroll. And they start learning more about it. Now that this and this lead into it being involved. I mean, I think it kind of would, right? If they say yes to learning about another organ, uh, another department, another area, and they like it so much, now they want to be involved. I think this leads into the other one. I, I guess I, I it, it, this is semantics, maybe the way I'm I'm interpreting it. But when I think of involved, I'm thinking you're contributing, you're going to meetings, you're 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 at the very least taking time away from your, your core responsibilities and, and what you could be involved in may be so far from, um, from what you're actually there to do. It just may not make sense, but I think it's realistic to at least make someone aware of what the other department yeah. does. Maybe, yeah. Hey, let's, let's let someone, let's let a manager from that group or a longtime employee, um, you know, share, share what they do. And because I look at that as just, inquisitive and, and interested in, in the organization, a different aspect of it, maybe that person ultimately wants to move in that direction. And so it makes sense to me that if, if the accountant does want to know about social media, that the social media person is, would be happy to share resources or, Hey, let me yep. you know, tell you what, what we're all about. Just spend a little time. And, and I don't know, I, I just, they sound different to me. The, the, okay. the, the request sounds different. You, you think it's more similar than not? No, it, it's, it's, it's different, but I think this one leads into the other one. It, it's, I, I, because if, the, if, if you show them more about the other area they want to know about, and if there is a genuine sparked interest, they're going to want to be involved more. So, oh, awesome. I love payroll. Can I do that? No, <laughs> because I get it, right? It, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's because you want them to be successful where they are. You want it to be efficient in what they're doing right now, unless it's a program. Some organizations have programs that 20% of the time is dedicated to exploring other areas. So, and, and, if, yeah. and for organizations that can do those kind of things and can accommodate it, great. I just think awareness is a different level of commitment or involvement is an entirely different greater level of commitment than involvement or awareness. Well, I agree with that. I get, but no, I get it. Yeah. Uh, like awareness, awareness, involvement, not so much. <laughs> Boy, we're getting late in the show. Yes. <laughs> well, well, we got two more. Look, so number eight, what felt confusing or frustrating for you lately? I love that. Yes. Yes. And when now here's here's what I want leaders to know if you're going to employ this remember folks if you haven't tried it's and I'm not talking bad about you guys if if you haven't tried to fix the culture and you're going to start doing it with this the first few months people are going to are not going to give you the answer you're looking for they're not going to be honest about it right now you are going to have that 5% of people that just want you to know how horrible everything is. They're going to tell you anyway, <laughs> if they don't ask you, <laughs> right? if you don't ask them, they're going to tell you, right? They're going to tell you, even if you don't ask, if you like CrossFit, craft beer, or if they feel confusing or frustrating for you lately at work, <laughs> that's what they're going to tell you, right? So if you, here's what you need to be careful as a leader. If you respond negatively to anything they say, you almost certainly shut them down for any other of these one-on-ones in the future, right? Now, obviously, it depends on how the message is delivered, right? If they start cursing you out left and right, yeah, that's a whole different situation. But if, if it's because you have to imagine if they feel frustrated or confused or especially frustrated about an initiative that you as a leader care so much about, that can sting. 
that can really sting. And this is where leaders have to practice their poker face and make sure they take the emotion out of it and focus on the rationale on how to respond to this question. Yeah. And I like pairing it with question number one. So we, we start off by saying in the past few months, when have you felt most motivated or energized in your work? And maybe you, you, you leave off the, if at all mm -hmm. question, and then follow that one up with what's felt confusing or frustrating to you lately. To me, that's the, the yin and the yang of, of, of all this. So let me find out what, what's best, what's going, going really well. And let me find out what, what isn't. And I think, maybe asking those things um, together or, or at the, in the same conversation would, would help set the stage for um, the, the, uh, the employee feeling comfortable with that second question, right? Cause Hey, I, you already told me what was good. That's positive. We're in a good place. Okay. What I, I know what you do like, what don't you like? Kind of. I thing. agree. I agree. It, it, it's that should have been part of question one. It almost feels like, it was part of question one, but they broke it into just to have an even number and uh, an odd number. I'm sorry to think there were only two questions and the rest of the other seven were filler. <laughs> just can't really write an I'm article. I'm getting that. I'm getting that, right? <laughs> Dude, you'll be great at writing articles. It'll be like Pete Newsome. Here we go. Two ways for you to do great at work. Show up and be awesome. <laughs> those, those are, that's great advice. I'll follow that. I, I, well, I mean, those aren't, those aren't. <laughs> Those are bad things to do <laughs> if we're being honest, right? Right. Um, All right. So I'm with you there. So that should be part of question one. But we really, but but we agree that's a great question to ask. Yes, absolutely. Yes, please. It's it's. But again, be careful how you respond to it. Right. You really got to keep your emotions to yourself because this is the one that could get a little bit touchy. And we've talked about that. If if you start off, if you're committed to having this um, improve your organization then you have to be committed to, to not reacting, you know, um, in an immature fashion. I think yeah. that's what, you know, when you mentioned poker face, well, if you, if you do anything, but that, if you do take it personally, that's a sign of immaturity, professional immaturity for sure. And, um, you know, people have to get there, right. As a leader, as a manager, it's easy to, to, to feel hurt. Um, but yeah. you're looking at it the wrong way. You, you have to get to the point of accepting. And we, we talked about this quite a few times already on the show that it, people will always do what's best for them. And yeah. that's not yours to have an opinion. I mean, you can have it, but it's not a relevant opinion and it, that it being in staffing, we, we know that well, it, why do people yeah. not you know, uh, take a job because for whatever criteria they're apl applying to that decision, it's going the other way. As recruiters, if we're doing our job right, we shouldn't be surprised by that answer because doing it right means we've dug into that individual's motivation. Mm -hmm. And if someone says, I only care about salary and I'm going to take whatever job pays the most, no ifs, ands, or buts. And even if it means a 10 hour commute both ways, and my manager's a, a, a monster and <laughs> the whole thing. And if that's what they're going to base their opinion on, it's ours to understand. Yep. Maybe we offer guidance to some degree, but even that is, is mm, really not, is, is not our place as uh, uh, compared to just the need to truly understand the motivation and the drive of the individual. Um, if they ask for our opinion, by all means, share it. Right. But um, I think too often you, the individual, the manager, the recruiter, it, it, whatever the case might be, is looking to impart their own set of standards and their own ideals onto the individual. And that's a, that's a failing, um, that's a failed path. You're going to go down, right? It's going to end <laughs> yeah. end badly. Sorry. I, I, that's just a hot button for me. Um, no, I get it. I get it. Because it, it, everyone's always going to do what's best for them by their own set of criteria. That's right. So right. the last one, We're down last to the but end. not least, to what degree would you say the vision of the organization is clear? Mm. I'm just going to say this. If most of your employees do not know why the organization exists and what it's striving to do, there is a huge failing communication there. 
huge fail. And you're not going to get, as a leader, you're not going to get to where you want to go. Your employees need to know what the mission of the of the of the organization is what the vision is right the vision is where you want to be the mission is how you're going to get there what are the steps that you're going to get to to that to that vision and if as a as a leader of an organization if you don't let your senior directors your middle managers your front of the line managers know what that vision is how can we possibly expect them to connect the dots between what the frontline employees does and how that affects the bottom line so to me that's a big one that if there is a 90, if there's a 0.01% chance that people do not know that has to be addressed immediately. All right, question for you. And yes, sir. If you're not watching on well, the video clip or on YouTube, you're, this isn't gonna I'll describe it. <laughs> my hands are a balance right now, right? Got it, up, okay. Uh, up and down. Okay. On one side of the balance is individual objectives the other side is company objectives, right? Company vision versus individual needs and wants. How, how much, where do you think that resides, right? The individual having the job that they love, but a company that lacks any vision that they care about, right? Conversely, mm -hmm. a company with amazing vision, saving the world, saving, you know, create, you know getting away with, um, you, know, you know, creating world peace, right? <laughs> right. Um, eliminating hunger anywhere in the world. The most noble thing you could think of from a company vision standpoint, but the, the individual job is, is, is awful. So where, where do you think that that lies? Because we're asking the question, we're getting an answer. Yeah. What I'm wondering is how much that matters. How much it matters. Yeah. That's, that's the question to the individual, right? They're in a the job that they love, but, they don't really like the company's mission. So where, so on that, on that scale, right. Uh, yeah. where, where would you say, I keep moving my hands up and down. Like, like <laughs> <no one's> watching. <laughs> I get what you're saying. It, it, so that that's a doozy. And, you know, very rarely do I, cause I'm always quick on my feet. Right. And today you've gotten me a few times. <laughs> I think it, I think yeah, it, yeah. I, well, these are, these are very personal questions, yeah. right? We're, we're looking at someone's, you know, well, what makes him show up today and and tomorrow and every day after that or not? And I, I know I'll say, I, I, I'll answer it, that my own question to some significant degree, I think company vision matters a whole lot more today than it did when I was getting out of school you know, almost, you know, al almost 30 years ago, a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> you say where, that in a whisper like nobody's going to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> almost 30 years ago. <laughs> Uh -huh. um I, I think it matters a lot but i but i asked but it's really a question i don't know the answer to it wasn't it wasn't to set you up it's it was just because i find it interesting where how, how much of that I, no, I agree with you a thousand percent that it that should be communicated clearly it yeah. should be um communicated often on what the company's mission is what their objective is and i think that's a that's a critical thing well, I'm just wondering how much you think it matters individual at the individual level. Well, it, so it's making me pause because I start thinking about different organizations to where the mission is clear. Right. But then I start thinking about other organizations that the mission is so clear that people sign up for, for tradition, for example, teachers. Right. Right. Nobody becomes a teacher to be a millionaire. We know why teachers become teachers. Right. They care about that mission. They care about the vision. They love teaching. Individually. Individually, correct. Not, they, they, not, not about the individual, not about the school they work for necessarily. That's interesting, right? Because the school may be not, but they're there. That, that's right for them, for that profession, it's a different story because you're right. They care about the students, not the venue, right? Some of them, because some schools are crappy. Right. But they're crappy, but teachers still show up because there's there's students who don't have a choice. Right. And they care about the students. So that's they, their vision and mission. So maybe that's not oh, or maybe that is a good example, because that goes with what you're saying individually. How does that align? So you translate that. So, right? so to, let's so I'm <laughs> trying to think of a of a organization that 
on, on one, on one hand, we could talk about Disney, right? There's many, many people who go work for Disney for the sake and opportunity of working for Disney because they love Disney so much easy yeah. to understand. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to come up with the other side of that equation where, you know, is it the tax collector's office or something? I don't want to say, <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, can't, I can't, I don't want the tax collector coming off to me, but, <laughs> but, 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 you know, something that no one, no one dreamt of growing up, um, you know, as, as a child to say one day, I want to work for, for this sort of mundane organization, but they love their job, right? They, they, they love what they get to do. They love, I'll go back to being an accountant. There are people who just love accounting and love numbers. Yeah. And I get that because I, I, I would, I probably would have loved that as a profession, believe it or not. I love spreadsheets and I know weird, but <laughs> I do. But so if I loved my job, but didn't care about the mission of the organization, is that important? Even though I might know it and they've communicated it to me, but I don't, that's not why I'm in the job. So, I, this is so far off topic, but I was no, no, but it's important though, Pete, because it, it's, it's, I like the question because what you're you're challenging people's people's motivation, individual motivation to the motivation of the organization, and you have to find that the, that balance because you're right. You are gonna it, it's the teacher. What's a great example because they care about the students, not necessarily the school in which they're teaching their students. So you translate that to what we're doing right now in a for-profit organization, right? You you could have some people. You could have some people that that love what they do for their teams but they don't care to move up they don't care about the mission but you don't have to care about the mission to contribute to the mission right because if you love what you do right if right. you do it with That's passion it. that outcome is going to help the mission they don't have to love it for that to happen so i guess there's the balance right whatever you put them to do it's got to it's got to benefit the reason the organization exists well i i think you have to acknowledge that not every company is going to be disney not every organization yeah. is going to be apple yay it's it, it'd be it's or google wonderful that you get to work there the other 99 percent of the population doesn't get to, to work with an organization yeah. that, that people come all over the world to see, um, or, you know, it's, it's the name, it's the brand that, that people get excited about and stand in line to buy their products or, 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 you know, have whatever it is about Google that's so magical, but other than it's, it's, it's Google, <laughs> you don't, have to, <laughs> you don't need to articulate that any further. It's Google. <laughs> so of course it's an awesome place to work, but that's not reality for most. So, so the yeah. mission, I, I don't know that, I think where the mission could be important, it's great. I also think, and maybe this is something we should explore and research a little bit for a future show. I really do believe when I was getting out of school, the employees didn't think about that as much. They didn't place as great a value on the mission of the organization as they do today. And maybe that's why companies are struggling with retention wow. to some degree because they don't have a mission that resonates with their you know, younger staff. Um, I, See, I think bet if we did point. a survey and this is complete, just conjecture on my part that, <laughs> but I think it's probably, I'd, I'd put money on it. How's that? That, that I'll put, I'd put my money where my mouth is on this, that if you polled a hundred people who were you know, in, in generate in my generation versus a hundred of, um, of Gen Z, the, the Gen Zers as a percentage would care significantly more about the org the mission of their employer than folks in Generation X. Do you agree with that? I would agree with that. I I because I I I I I just think times have changed. I, I don't here's here's why I would agree with that. Because before back in the day in the baby boomers and our er, our era at the beginning part of of Gen X, the idea was to just get a job like a steady job, steady income, weekly, biweekly, monthly, whatever the case may be, until you get a pension, right? I remember growing up, that's all my mom said, get a job that has a pension. I don't care where it is, get a pension, right? Um, so, and then that that quickly changed for me once I started realizing that that's, that, that P word is starting not to exist anymore, right? Unless okay. you're in the military. Okay, you just, you just made a perfect example. So I just thought yeah. of a boring industry, making cars. Right, yeah. making Fords. Right. No, not, nothing sexy about making Ford automobiles. Making Teslas 
on the other hand, to make the world, you know, if, if you believe that you know, Tesla yeah, no, I know, get it. Are, are helping the planet, although there's some, some question about lithium batteries, you know, not at all helping the planet and <laughs> the energy needed to, to, to mine those and all that. But, but just on the surface, you could see why it'd be really exciting to work for Tesla or SpaceX, but not so much to work for Ford. But, the, but see, so now, man, you're putting me on the fence, though. But does and I that like matter, it. Right? I like if you, it. If, is it, is I it, think it does. I think it does, think especially it does Ford. Let's say, let's say you and I work, you and I first meet for the first time in 1912, whenever Ford was really big, and we're working on the assembly line. You know, there's something about working with your hands and a pride that comes with it that's attached to the name of the organization you're working for right? It's a skill, right? So there's a pride there. And I don't know how that pride connects or interacts with the vision of the organization. Well, back then, do you got me on that? <laughs> well, back, back, back then Ford, Ford was different, right? Ford was, Ford was ridiculously innovative and, and they were changing the world as an organization. That's a Tesla of, of their time. It, it, yeah, it, well, even I think even more extreme, right? I well, mean, yeah, yeah. When you look at what they did and and th some of the innovations, I just was listening to um uh to an audio book the other day talking about the innovations they made in in creating what is become but came modern assembly lines. They they were yep. so far ahead of their time in in every possible way. Um, but now it's like yeah, and uh, the reason I thought of Ford is when you talked about working for a big company and collecting a pension, and I know that was a thing in the American auto industry. It was sort of, I just, it just sounds mundane to me. It, it, and what? Wait a minute. Didn't Ford, this is a, re, a great example then. Didn't Ford give their employees um, an, an insane discount or a, a, a really interesting way to purchase a Ford vehicle? That way the employees know what, what the organization was making and they can have that pride in that organization. I thought Ford was the first, the, the first business owner or the first organization to start um, uh, lending out um, uh, a cash for employees to buy a vehicle and they'll pay it back with, uh, with a huge discount via payroll de deductions. So and he did that quite a bit because that was, there's no, there was no better advertising than word of mouth. Right. And the yeah. people who can say that, hey, I built this car, look how great it is. And people see that pride in it. So to me, that was a great way of Ford connecting the work the organization is doing with the mission that he had. All right. I'm going to find it. We're, we're, so how about a steel mill? Can we come up with something? <laughs> <No one. laughs> but even I, I, that, you I know, know what you're price. saying. So, so maybe, maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Maybe, maybe the reality is the motive, the, you know, the, the goal of the organization should there's there should be pride and there should be um something you know, important about the mission of every organization but but i'm sure we can come up with um with some examples that, that i just think i think both are important but i think the mission of the organization is more important today than it's ever been and uh, i agree and that's worthy of further exploration that we're not going to do today. So we'll, we'll, we'll come up with how, how, how to have that be its own show. But it still, I like this question, but I think yes. it, where it's going is uh, you're going to you're going to have some interesting conversations that follow up from that. So we got six questions overall that we're going to continue on with. We love six. We, we love <laughs> two. We're OK with two, six. You got it. Ish. All right. Oh, this was good. I like this. This, this was awesome. good. You you, yeah. you 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 brought a good topic to the table today. So we're gonna have to raise the bar for next time. I think oh, we're doing yes, Q and A though. I've seen a couple questions. So yep. Friday, Friday, I think we'll do we'll do Q and A this week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Definitely we'll do it. So All right, man. Thank you. No, thank you. It was great. Folks, please let us know how you feel about the show. Give us a like and give us a review on your favorite platform. Download us. We would love to hear from you. And email us. Email us your, uh, your, your uh, Q&A questions, which is hirecalling at fourcornerresources.com. That's it. And you can find uh, that on, on the Four Corner Resources website. Easy enough to find under the podcast section. And like Ricky said, we love if you subscribe and review us five stars, of course. And sure. thank you for listening. Drive safely. And we'll be back to talk again soon. Have an awesome week, guys.